She is right over there by the – yep, she over there singing. And welcome to Bushnell Prairie City High School. Joey Yelnick is alongside her on the camera tonight as Keeley Lee getting ready to sing the national anthem. Is Kaylee Keeley Lieb on the national anthem. And now time for the starting lineups, and we'll tell you more about those as Jake Croxton will do them for us here, and then we'll talk about them. Let's do this officially now. Welcome to Bushnell Prairie City High School as the varsity contest between the Macomb High Bombers and the BPC Spartans about to get underway. I'm Dwayne Hewlett. Joey Yelnick is alongside, and I hope that Will Thomas is listening somewhere right now, but I think he's on a date night. I believe so, yeah. you got to put that mic up in front of your face. Huh? <laughs> I, be I believe Will Thomas is uh, somewhere enjoying a night with his girlfriend, yes. Yeah, but he's excited to get here going on TSSR Game Time Live tonight. Yeah, Will is part. Of, Will and Joey and all those guys are part of the SID department or sports information department. Is that still what they call it now? Um, athletic communications, media relations, sports information, all kind of the same thing. We we like all the different names we get. At any rate, Will's going to be gone for ten of the next twelve days. He told me that's a lot of travel. Western's on the road quite a bit here down the stretch of the next couple weeks. As that ball's out of bounds. Let's look at the starters for these two teams. Braden Holdhouse, number 12 for the Bombers. Number 10 is Dion Doyle. Number three is Connor Bishop starting tonight. Ian Case, number 20. And Drew Watson knocked that one away. He wears number one. For BPC, it's Osmond Perelku with the basketball, number 23. Number 24 is Dalton Huffman as he does the pick and roll. That's Tanner Kleindance with a number 10. Now to Lane Huffman, number 11. And the final starter on the floor is... Nate Kramer, number 34 for the Spartans. That's how they line up. BPC won the jump, so it'll be Macomb basketball. 
on the next change of possession. Shot off, no good. Tanner Kleindance high up for the rebound, and just like that, a jump ball. It'll be the Bombers basketball, and it'll go to Drew Watson, who apparently is going to come down to the baseline to turn it. His coach Anderson was over there giving him a little uh, pep talk on the sideline before they realized he had to go to the baseline to get the ball. Jeremy Anderson, the head coach for the Bombers. It was Tyler Snyder, the head coach for the Spartans. Drew it. Drew Watson with the missed three, but Connor Bishop gets the rebound and the putback. Foul's going to be on. It's going to be on number 24, Dalton Huffman, his first. Great awareness there from Bishop, just flying in out of nowhere to grab that and put it back in. Second or the first free throw is good for Connor Bishop. So the unlikely player to get the first two points of the game for the Bombers is Connor Bishop. And he followed that up with a free throw, and then he follows that up with a foul. One foul on each team now. Bishop picks up his first, and he's also got all three points for the Bombers. 6.33 to go here in the first quarter. Lane Huffman with it. This is the first time I think I've got to see Lane Huffman play. He is still out with a broken ankle earlier in the year. He received in the final football game of the season. Down to Tanner Kleindance. His shot's off no good. Dalton Huffman with the re rebound. Put back. It's off no good. Kleindance with the rebound and the put back. And he's going to be fouled by Ian Case. And there's a lot of contact down low. Ian Case is going to pick up his first, team second. A whole lot of beating and banging down low early in this one, Joey. Yes, sir. It's a good sign early for Kleindance to get those offensive rebounds with uh, Deion Doyle and Ian Case being 6'8", 6'7", respectively for Macomb. He's going to have his work cut out for him tonight. Tanner Kleindance gets the first bucket to fall, the first free throw, I should say. And Spartans are on the scoreboard, and he hits the second. He's two for two from the free throw line, and the Spartans cut the lead to one at 3-2 as we approach the six-minute mark of the first quarter. Connor Bishop with it. Gets it up top to Holdhouse. 5.50 left in the opening quarter. Ian Case, a little pump fake on the pass fake, and he drives to the basket, gets the bucket to fall, and Ian Case going strong to the hoop there. And that's something the Bombers like to see early in this one. Nearly a turnover. Kramer comes down with it. 5.26 remaining in the first quarter. Bomber showing a lot of aggression early, trying to poke out that ball and get a turnover. Jump ball as Ian Case went up and tied up Tanner Kleindance, who was way up in the air. Kleindance gives up a couple eight inches, but Kleindance has got some hops. And Ian Case said, yeah, I've got some hops too, and tied him up in the air. That's about as high of a jump ball as you're ever going to see. Possession to BPC. Looking at the pick and roll again. Nothing doing that time. Kramer's going to run. Puts a little runner off. No good. Kleindance and Case fighting for the rebound. They both lose it. It ends up in the hands of Connor Bishop. They were so concerned about fighting with the basketball with each other, Joey, that they didn't realize they needed to hold on to it. Well, Bombers got the ball, so I'm sure they're happy. And Ian Case says, I can drive to the rack, and I can hit a sports corner three, too. And Ian Case has five early in this one, and it's eight to two. Macomb leads BPC. Is Devin Raleigh. Shelter Insurance brings BPC Sports to TSSR Game Time Live. A skip pass of sorts to Huffman from Perelku, and then Huffman not a good pass, and Ian Case is there to steal it away. Ian Case, one of uh, Osmond Perelku, is going to pick up the foul. It'll be his first, team's third. Scratch that, team's second.
Holdouts looked at the three, didn't take it. Watson, baseline jumper, about 12 feet is good. Assist from Braden Holdhouse. And Drew Watson has his first two points. Nice little pass from Holthouse there, just a flick of the wrist on that left hand. Finds the open man. Now away from the basketball. Jake Hobson and Dalton Huffman, a pair of 24s battling it down there. And Hobson picks up his first foul. Team foul number three. Kramer to inbound. And finally get it into Lane Huffman. Tipped away out of bounds by Malachi Conley, who Connor Bishop got the start for tonight. So Malachi Conley, number five in the game, along with Hobson as Doyle is down, set down. Perelku loses the ball, and then Perelku is going to pick up his second foul. Team's third. 3.38 left here in quarter number one. It's 10-2 Bombers, and they have the basketball after the second foul from Perelku. Brock Beekman getting ready to check in. He'll replace Osman Perelku. Deion Doyle comes in. Ian Case takes a seat. Case has five points. Bishop three, Watson two for the Bombers. Tanner Kleindens has the only two BPC points. They're both from the free throw line. Right side, Malachi Conley with it. 3.26 to go. Watson's going to try another three. It's off no good. Hobson just rips that away from Tanner Kleindens. Three by Brayden Holdhouse off the front of the iron. No good. Possession to BPC as Lane Huffman comes down with it. Malachi Conley is going to pick him up. And right off the foot of Tanner Kleindens, it's going to go out of bounds. And that was a pass that was nearly... Impossible to catch right at the feet of Tanner Kleindens. A couple of mental here errors early from the Spartans. Hopefully they'll uh, catch up later on. Three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Holdhouse to Doyle. Doyle's foul. Count it. Powered through the foul, I think, of either Kramer of or Huffman. It's going to go to Huffman, his second, team's fourth. And the old-fashioned three-point play attempt, another one, this time for Deion Doyle. Subs coming in for BPC. Huffman takes a seat. Tanner Pierce comes in. Deion Doyle's free throw is good. He's got three points. Gavin Pimble. I believe it's his birthday today, so... Happy birthday, Gavin Pimble. If it's not today, it was yesterday. Saw my nephew share some stuff, wishing him a happy birthday. So happy birthday, Gavin Pimble. You're not going to see Caden Palm tonight. He's got a bum ankle, I'm being told. So he's not playing today, unfortunately, for BPC. Brock Beekman and... Gavin Pimble on the floor for BPC, along with Huffman, Pierce, and Kleindance. A little runner is good for Lane Huffman, and that's BPC's first basket of the game. Hobson, baseline jumper, 10 feet off, no good. Rebound picked up by Gavin Pimble. He'll go back the other way with it. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. McComb just looking to get an early shot there, maybe just slow it down and control the game here early or late in the first quarter. Huffman, pull up jumper, baseline, long. Hobson battling with Pierce for the rebound, gets it saved in to Holdhouse. Holdhouse goes to Doyle, pump fake, shot up and in. He got Brock Beekman up in the air, and Deion Doyle has five points of his own now. Showing off that footwork early, Doyle is a special player here for the Bombers. Deion Doyle was the player of the tournament, the MVP, or he would have been the MVP of the tournament for the Bombers had they have beaten Rock Ridge. Landon Bull came home with that trophy from the, Rock Ridge, if I believe. You are correct. Deion Doyle was the MVP of the, of the Spartan Tip-Off Classic earlier this year here to open the season. 
You do plenty of games, Dwayne. I'm sure it gets all mixed up in your head. Oh, they all do. That's for <laughs> sure. Ethan McKim in the game for BPC. The only starter left on the floor is Lane Huffman. Ian Case back in the game. Malachi Conley. Bishop is back in as well. Hobson has taken a seat. Skipped across. Malachi Conley, left wing three. Off front iron, no good. Doyle with the rebound and the put back. He has scored seven straight for the Bombers. And a timeout on the floor charge to BPC. It's going to be a full timeout. It is their first timeout. We'll take a break and we'll be back on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH right after this. I chose the MDH OBGYN group uh, because I've heard wonderful things about Dr. Smith. Um, and upon entering the office, I, I really got along with everybody and got a warm feeling. The staff is warm and inviting and welcoming. It's a small community, so it's a really nice uh, hospital to have here in the rural area. I continue to choose MDH because of the relationships I have. I really enjoy everybody here. MDH Sport Medicine Rehab is just not for the athlete. Um, we see a variety of ages, getting them from having pain to no pain to get back to their normal activities and their prior level of function. And welcome back to Bushnell Prairie City High School. Dwayne Hewlett, Joey Yelnick alongside, and, uh, well, 59.1 seconds. Been a, kind of a quick first quarter, oddly enough, with as many fouls as we've had, but... 17 to four is the score. Bombers with the lead, and Malachi Conley is going to pick up a cheap one as Lane Huffman found his way by. Conley picks up his first. It's the team's fourth. We'll see if BPC makes any adjustments here to uh, beat this aggressive Macomb man defense. Four fouls apiece here with 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Brock Beekman to Huffman to McKim. Gavin Pimble for three. Off no good. Connor Bishop gets the rebound for the Bombers with 23 seconds remaining. Ian Case now guarded by McKim. Over to Doyle. Doyle left it short. Got his own rebound. Left it short again. That time it was taken away by Huffman. And Huffman's going to go back the other way. He has it stripped away by Watson with eight seconds left. He's going to outlet it to Doyle. Doyle across to Case. Case pump fake, step back three, left wing. Good. A sports corner three for Ian Case. That's his second triple of the quarter. He's got eight points. And uh, the Bombers lead here at the end of one quarter of play, 20 to four. We'll take a break, and we'll be back on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH right after this. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. Welcome back to Bushnell Prairie City High School as you're watching Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling coverage of Macomb High Sports and Devin Raleigh's shelter insurance coverage of BPC Sports on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. I'm Dwayne he Hewlett, Joey Elnick alongside. Joey, a 20-4 first quarter for the Bombers, and BPC just could not find any rhythm offensively. Uh, no, they could not, and especially on the defensive end there too for them. Uh, look, to, look for them to switch up that zone defense they've been playing. Uh, Bombers just attacking them inside, outside, mid-range, everywhere. So BPC will look to turn things around here as we start the second quarter. Second quarter is underway. Bombers have the basketball to start the quarter. BPC will have the possession arrow. As we work through the second half of the first half, Doyle's jumper from the right elbow left it a little short again. He has been just a little short tonight on some of his jumpers. It looks like he's maybe fading away a little bit. Gavin Pimble for three, a sports corner three for Gavin Pimble. And BPC gets their second bucket of the game. That's exactly what I see coming out of the quarter break there from BPC, just getting a quick three up. Ian Case down to Doyle, out to Bishop. Bishop's going to drive. Gives it to Doyle. Hobson. 
Jumper good. Jake Hobson gets his first two points. Pimble's pass is tipped, but Beekman gets it. Gavin Pimble's going to try another one. That one's short, bounces long off the rim. Rebound to Hobson. Pimble loving the left corner wing early on. Past three attempts have all been from that same spot. Bishop with it, 6.43 to go. And Tanner Kleindance, who's back in the game, gets the steal. Hands it off to Nate Kramer. Kramer going to go to the lake to the floor, lifts it up, finger roll. Kleindance, he passed it to himself, kind of. It's knocked away out of bounds by the Bombers. It'll stay with BPC. And I'm not real sure that uh, Nate should have been able to touch that ball, actually. He ran out of bounds after missing the shot. I think he might have been the first one to touch it when he came back in. Well, as they say, ball don't lie. <laughs> Couldn't get it uh, inbounded. So it is possession back to McComb. And Ian Case running the point for the uh, Bombers. Not very often you see the tallest guy on the team being the point guard. At least not when they have some other good guards. Deion Doyle says, I can shoot the three, too. And a good box out by Tanner Kleindens as Ian Case went through him to get the rebound. Ian Case is going to pick up his second foul. Team's first of the second quarter. It's pretty much the te textbook definition of an over-the-back over foul there. Ian Case just jumping over his man. Yep, great box out. Ian Case takes the seat with two fouls. Drew Watson checks back in. So it's Bishop. Watson, Hobson, Doyle, and Holdhouse on the floor for the Bombers. For BPC, it's Lane Huffman, Brock Beekman, Tanner Kleindens, Nate Kramer, and Gavin Pimble. Huffman to Pimble, right side three this time. Back iron, no good. Watson with the rebound. Outlets it to Doyle. Doyle puts the shot up. Blocked by Beekman, who got up in the air to block that one. Now, Holdhouse getting a little fancy on the pass there. Throws it out of bounds. Doyle couldn't get to it. And Brock Beekman, who gives up a couple inches at least, maybe three, to uh, Doyle, got right up and blocked that shot. And just the awareness there to get back on the fast break and uh, positioning there just to get his feet set and get up and block that Deion De Doyle layup. Now Doyle's like, I can play defense too in a half-court set. Connor Bishop just accidentally got hit in the nether region. Never want to see that. I do believe, and he's uh, he's uh, still uh, trying to walk that one off. We'll just leave it at that. How about that? It's all good with me. We don't need to get into too graphic detail here. <laughs> yeah, he's going to take a seat here. I don't think I could take a shot like that and keep playing. He's so. going to go over and bounce on the bleachers a couple of times probably. And Malachi Conley comes back in. And hopefully all is good for Connor Bishop. Get that man some ice. Nate Kramer to inbound. He gets it in. Malachi Conley went to BPC for a year or two. I'm not really sure how long he went to BPC, but he did go to BPC. So a lot of these kids know him. Malachi is a junior. As Connor Upton is in the game for BPC now, number 30. Holdhouse with the steal on Beekman. Oh, what a spin move, but he gets too far into the basket. Rebound by Watson. The put up is good. That was a nice spin move, though. Too bad he couldn't have finished, huh? I'm sure he wanted to finish that, put that on his uh, huddle highlights or whatever they've got now. Connor Upton takes a travel before he takes a shot. BPC still struggling from the field. They've got three points here in this quarter. They had four in the first quarter. Live chat's open. Hop in there and tell us where you're watching from. See how far away we can get somebody watching from. Surely there's some folks from Florida watching either BPC or Macomb tonight. 
We'll get somebody from farther away than that. If you haven't shared it or subscribed to our channel, share the link, like it, subscribe to our channel so you know when Macomb High and BPC games are broadcast. Malachi Conley with it. This is more Jeremy Anderson style basketball as Conley throws it away as Watson couldn't get to it. I don't think Coach Anderson liked that one. No, no, probably not. And understandably so. Nate Kramer sets a pick on Malachi Conley. Now Beekman with it. Picks it up. Goes to Kramer. 3.40 remaining, and Kramer's pass was either tipped or just a bad one. I couldn't tell for sure. Holdouse came down with it. Watson going to try a three from the right corner. Off no good. Doyle with the rebound and the put back. Deion Doyle has nine. Anderson's going to want to talk it over here. Cone wants a 30-second timeout. Their first time out of the game. We'll keep it here. This timeout being brought to you by Sports Corner at 124, Macomb's original local sports bar. His Sports Corner at 124 with a focus on local sports. Catch WIU games and all the area TSSR game time live broadcasts at Sports Corner at 124. All while enjoying your favorite cold drink and some of the best food in West Central Illinois. Tomorrow night, BPC's basketball team, boys' basketball team, will be there, I believe, from 4.30 to 9, I believe is the hours. They'll be there, and they'll get a proceed, a portion of the proceeds donated to the basketball team. I think they'll be waiting tables and cleaning tables and doing some stuff like that. So go support the BPC boys' basketball team. But Sports Corner at 124, one of the biggest supporters of high school sports in the area. There is zero doubt about that between them and MDH. There's not bigger supporters. And Lane Huffman stepped across and on the line as he just backed up too far. A half backcourt violation and a turnover to McComb. Landon Lambert checking in for McComb. Langdon Lambert, he is a junior. Also made the TSSR Game Time Live all-area football team, did Langdon, Langdon Lambert. Drew Watson was on there as well. Dion Doyle, pass stolen away. Nope, came down the hands of Holdhouse. Conley with it, back to Watson. 2.48 remaining. Holdhouse for three, it's off no good. Yep, Kramer went up with both hands and only hit it with one. Knocked it out of bounds himself. It'll stay with the Bombers. Lambert didn't make much of an effort there to get the board, but all works out for the team in black. Kramer comes up with it on the inbound pass that was knocked away. Pimble to Kleinitz, three by Huffman. Hard off back iron, no good. Doyle with the rebound. He's going to outlet it to Conley. Conley shot up and in. Malachi Conley gets the bucket. That's his first two points. It's 28 to 7. BPC just needs to slow it down here and really use motion in their offense to find a good look here and try to get something at the rim if you can. Coach Anderson and the Bombers love defense, and now they're going to call travel for Nate, on Nate Kramer. Ian Case getting ready to check back in for the Bombers. Deion Doyle will take a seat. Ian Case back in. He's got eight points, including a couple threes. Actually, he's got three threes, doesn't he? He's got 11 points. Got the mark down to one at the end of the first quarter. I want to pass from Lambert there. Conley pull-up jumper from about 17 feet is good. He's got four points. One thirty-five remaining in the first half. Upton to Kramer. One thirty remaining. Kleindance jumper good. Tanner Kleindance gets his fourth points. Maybe a sign of life for this Spartan offense that they can start building off that bucket. Yeah, falling behind by 20 to a Bombers team that loves to play defense is a tall order. Lambert tries to skip it across. He hits the bottom of the rim. Give him a missed shot on that. 
you're a stat guy. They call stats to you occasionally, don't they? So oh, is, that, is that a is that a shot or is that a I bad think, pass? I think that's probably a bad pass turnover. You give him the benefit of the doubt when it hits the bottom of the rim. Connor Upton oh. way up in the air. A rainbow three falls off the back iron. Ian Case with the rebound. He's going to go right over Connor Upton and pick up the foul. That'll be Ian Case's third foul. Connor Upton was sitting there. He could have built a campfire and ate some s'mores while he was waiting for Ian Case to, to come down there and hit him. And Somebody's got to inbound it for BPC. Is Ethan McKim checking in. Nate Kramer sits down. I'm not real sure what uh, if Ian thought he was going to jump over him or what. But Ethan McKim with it. 22 seconds. Upton another three. That time he hits one. A sports corner three for Connor Upton. You hear the term rainbow a lot when you hear about three-point shooters. That is a high as an arc as you're going to see. Some gyms that might hit the ceiling. <laughs> Holdhouse leaves that one short. Outlet Huffman was intended, and it's going to be knocked out of bounds by Watson with 1.5 seconds left here in the first half. Connor Upton to inbound for BPC. And traveling. And that's the end of the first half. 30 to 12. The Bombers have the lead over BPC. You're watching Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling coverage of Macomb High Sports and Devin Raleigh Shelter Insurance coverage of BPC Spartan Sports on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. We'll take a break. I'll let you hear a word from our title sponsor, McDonough District Hospital. As you know, MDH is our title sponsor here on TSSR Game Time Live, and we're here with Lindsay Douglas, the Director of Physician and, Re and Provider Recruitment. I about left out provider out of that. So Physician and Provider Recruitment here at MDH. It's a huge mouthful for me, so explain <laughs> to us what that is. Sure. So um, I am in charge of bringing in candidates for both physician and provider positions here at MDH. So provider meaning anything like nurse practitioner, um, advanced practice nurse practitioner, uh physician assistant, things like that. So I source those candidates, bring them in, and try to find the best providers and physicians to provide care at our facility. So you found a home at MDH. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? How long have you been here? Stuff sure. like that. So I am from Macomb originally. I graduated from Macomb High in 2009, graduated from WIU in 2014, um, studied communication there, and started my career in politics and worked for um, a couple different state representatives and state senators, um, then found myself in the educational realm for a little while at the Regional Office of Education, and um eventually found myself here at MDH. I started here in February of this past year. Um, I started out as patient advocate and um, this role opened up and I'm now in the role of director of physician and provider recruitment. Obviously, McDonough District Hospital, very important to Macomb. Sure. And it's the communities not only of Macomb, but Bushnell, Colchester, Blandonsville, Industry. You're from here. So, so what was it that drew you back here and got you to stay here at MDH? So MDH is like home to me. Um, I am a fourth generation MDH employee. So my great grandma, Nancy Weaver, was one of the first nurses that they hired when the hospital opened in 1958. My grandma started working here maybe 10 to 15 years after that. She started as a um, CNA on acute care, and then she worked in PEDS, and eventually um, she worked as the unit secretary for home health and hospice, and she retired from that position after being at MDH for a total of 50 years. Um, my That's a long time. <laughs> yeah. My mom is here as an administrative secretary. She's Brian's um, administrative assistant, and so... I'm now here as a fourth generation employee of the hospital. So it was kind of a thing where I always thought I might end up at MDH just because of that family legacy of working in healthcare. So 
before we came on camera, I heard a story. You guys were at a speaker recently, and you got to be there with your mom. Yeah. Does, does that make it really special to be a part of MDH, to be, still have your mom working It's there? so cool. Um, my mom is down the hall from me, so if I need something in the middle of the day, I can run down the hall and grab her. Um, but it's also just cool to think about like the legacy that that leaves in the community, especially being fourth generation and female. I think that that's just a really special thing for um, my family and for this community here. So as we look at those kind of, you, you have a personal connection here. How do you use those personal connections when you're out trying to recruit a physician or a provider? Sure. So um, I use the story a lot of my office, actually. So I'm in room 318, which um, was a uh room for patients at one time and now they've converted it into an office space and one of my favorite stories to tell physicians is that my great grandma was sick in the hospital and um, was in that room and that's where my grandma was recruited to join MDH so my grandma had no plans of working in healthcare, but she was taking care of her mom um, as a sick patient and the nurse at the time came to her and was like you are such a great caretaker. Why are you not a nurse? Why are you not doing this as your full-time occupation? And so my grandma decided that healthcare would be her um, lifetime and like 50 years. Um, And so she started working for MDH and was recruited right out of my office. So I just find that to be a really special connection when I'm looking to bring people to this community. Like the recruitment started in this office 50 years ago. And here I am starting a whole new legacy of recruiting people. And I just am so passionate about this community. And I just love living here. I moved back here from Quincy, chose to um, raise our family here um, just because we're really, we really love Macomb and we really love being in McDonough County. So obviously the personal touch, you got the great personal story. You, You love Macomb. What does MDH offer to the providers and the physicians What's what's the sales point for you on the professional level? So um, because we're a small rural healthcare organization, your voice is heard here much louder than when you're in a large organization. So when you're in one of those larger hospital systems, you might be one of 15 to 20 providers in a specialty. At MDH, you might be one of two, you might be one of one. And so your voice in that medical staff um, office is going to be the loudest one in the room about your specialty. And that's a really unique situation for a physician to be, you know, the main voice for speaking for pediatrics or for speaking for orthopedics or whatever that specialty is. You're, you're it, you're the guy, you're the one providing the care for the whole community. And you don't get that if you go to a large healthcare organization. So those bonuses are probably obstacles in some cases as well. So how do you overcome those obstacles? Um, It really depends on the provider. You know, if someone is really wanting to um, be in a place where they're not, they're just one in the background, they don't want to be that main voice, you know, we just, I kind of have to tell them, you know, this is unique, you know, this is it's a unique community where you're going to go out into Walmart to get your groceries and run into one of your patients. And you're not going to find that everywhere. And that might be scary for you thinking about, well, I don't want to mess somebody's care up and then run into them and have to explain it to all of Walmart. Um, but it's just, you can also sell that as you're not going to go to Chicago and work somewhere um, where you're going to run into your patients every day. Well, Lindsay, I appreciate you coming and talking to us today. Hopefully some people can understand more about MDH and how it's such a family-oriented business and, and so important to McDonough, McDonough County and the surrounding area. Keep doing a good job, and, and maybe your your little girl that wanted that 100 chicken nuggets <laughs> can uh, be the next generation yes, to join MDH. Exactly, exactly. Well, we'll be back after halftime here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. I'll try this again. Welcome back to Bushnell Prairie City High School. Works better if you turn the board up so you folks at home can hear me. It's minor technicalities. 2.50 left in halftime. It's 30 to 12. The Bombers lead the BPC Spartans. You're watching our brothers heating and cooling coverage of Macomb High Sports and Devin Raleigh Shelter Insurance coverage 
of Bushnell Prairie City Sports on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. Look at some stats from the first half for the Bombers, and officially 11 points for Ian Case on the strength of three three pointers. Nine points for Dion Doyle. Drew Watson has four. Malachi Conley has four. Connor Bishop has three. Jake Hobson has two. Scratch that. Case has eight points. Wait, see if Jake Croxton announces, see if I can get that right. But maybe Ian only has eight. Yeah. And then for BPC, four points for Tanner Kleindens, three points for Connor Upton, three points for Kevin Pimple, two points. Lane Huffman has two for the Spartans. It's 30 to 12. I want to say hi to uh, Jessica LaGrange. She's watching from Maine. Jenny McCool, one of our regulars, watching the Spartans from Minnesota. And Wayne Waldo from Rensselaer, Indiana. See the sign for Rensselaer, Indiana. I want to go to Logansport, Indiana, US 24 Speedway, and cover racing and have the Hart Non-Wing Micro Series over in Logansport, Indiana. I don't think Rensselaer is too far away from Logansport. Wayne, if you're still watching, maybe you can tell me if I'm right or wrong about that. I remember seeing the sign anyway. So we're under a minute to go in the half time here, and we're about ready to kick things back off with the second half from BPC High School. It's been all bombers in the first half for the most part as BPC just unable to get anything going against a very stingy Macomb Bomber defense, and we bring Joey Yelnick back under the headset. Joey, the defense for the Bombers was suffocating us from a Bombers or from a Spartans perspective in the first half. Yes, only 12 first half points for the Spartans, and they got a couple open looks on threes, couldn't knock them down, but they're just not letting anything down low, and we'll see if uh, their approach changes in the second half, see if they can get something going on the offensive end. It will be BPC basketball to open the third quarter. We are underway. McComb has the possession arrow. That could have been a travel right there on Huffman of the lane variety. Dalton is in. So for BPC, it's the original starters. Lane Huffman, Tanner Kleindance with the basketball. Nate Kramer, number 34, number 24, Dalton Huffman, and number 23, Osman Perelku. Huffman, a little floater off no good. Holdhouse with the rebound for the Bombers. It's the starters as well. Holdhouse, Dion Doyle. There is... Drew Watson, Connor Bishop is there, and Ian Case. So it's all starters back on the floor for both teams here. 7-18 to go in the third quarter. Case dumps it down to Doyle. Doyle puts the shot up. Kleindens gets the foul. Doyle gets the buckets. Basket is good for Dion Doyle. Tanner Kleindens gets his first foul. Two points for Dion Doyle. Old-fashioned three-point play attempt coming, and he missed that one. He's got 11. He's one for two from the free throw line. Bombers shot just two free throws in the first half. They're two for three now. There's a shot off, no good. Doyle high for the rebound for the Bombers. BPC shot just two free throws as well. They were both made by Tanner Kleindens. Ian Case, left corner three, off no good. Dalton Huffman, if you want to uh, show an exhibition of rebounding or blocking out, that was pretty much what Dalton Huffman did right there. Let the ball drop in front of him and just picked it up. Just absolutely bodied his, uh, his man there, just getting his butt into the defender and getting the rebound. There he draws contact and leaned into Deion Doyle and might have got him in the nose, actually. Huffman's going to go to the free throw line. Deion Doyle picks up his first foul. A couple more free throws coming for BPC. This is, these off the hands of Dalton Huffman. He is yet to score here in the basketball game. First one, good. 
Aunt Jenny in Minnesota can be happy. Dalton's got on the scoreboard, both the Huffman boys. Oh, it's Nate Kramer's aunt, excuse me. I was thinking Marilyn Huffman. She usually talks in here, too. I know what I'm talking about, folks. Really, I do. It's hard to keep everybody straight. You ever have that problem, Joey? I mean, Joey Yelnick is from Danville, essentially, right? Yeah, Danville, Illinois. Yeah, and, around. And, and you're, you come to a Bushnell Prairie City High School for a basketball game tonight, and somebody you know comes and talks to you. Exactly. See, I don't know many people in Macomb. I'm still pretty new to the area, but I'm making some connections. Osmond Peroku picks up his third foul. Team second of the quarter. Ian Case at the free throw line to shoot a couple free throws. He's got eight points, 6-11 to go in the third quarter. First one is good. Give him nine. So anyway, you're sitting over here, and I see you talking to somebody. I was like, hey, Joey made a new friend during the JV game. Ian makes them both. But no, not so fast. You found somebody you knew. Just happened to be an old friend living in Macomb. Back from my hometown, three hour, three and a half hours east. Who would have known I would have uh, found someone I went to high school with here living in Macomb. Youth minister, is that right? Yeah, youth minister down at uh, Maple Ave Church. Dalton Huffman hits the sports corner three. Sixteen to thirty-four. Out to hold house. Dalton Huffman with the steal. Bombers have loved that pass over the zone from one wing to another wing uh, in this one. Just chucking it over the defense and finding the open man. There it ends in a turnover, but we've seen it end in success tonight. Perelku to Klein Dents. Puts the shot up hard off the glass, no good. Tip around, and Huffman actually knocked that out of Klein Dents' hands. Now Bishop with it. Goes to Hold House three, right side, top of the key. A sports corner three for Braden Hold House. That's his first bucket of the night. And the Bombers lead 37 to 16. Hold House had a great game against Illini West on Friday night in Macomb. Uh, I think, believe he had about three second half threes. Put on a clinic from downtown. Perelku gets the rebound there after the missed shot. Dalton Huffman goes to Lane Huffman. Nice pass into Tanner Kleindentz from Huffman. And Kleindentz gets another bucket. Kleindentz has six. Great entry pass there, setting up the big man for some easy points. I want to say hi to Clint, Kent McClure watching from Macomb. We have Kent watching. He watches quite often. See his name in the live chat pretty regularly. I love all our regulars and like to see the new people watching as well. Bishop three, no good. Rebound to Ian Case. And Case trips over the feet of a Spartan. I'm not sure which one. Now Perelku is going to save it in, and Drew Watson is going to track it down. Watson three, top of the key. Rattles it around. A sports corner three for Drew Watson. He's got seven. Drew Watson becoming a little bit more of a scoring presence. Bombers, are, bombers have been exceptional from downtown tonight. I feel like four or five guys have all knocked down a three-pointer. Perel Koo goes to Kleindentz. His turnaround jumper good. That's Tanner Kleindentz over Doyle. He has eight. 250 remaining. Three from Watson off, no good. As that was, Braden Holdhouse drives in and gets the bucket, but that rebound by Ian Case as Dalton Huffman tried to box him out, but the rebound just went too long. 
Case, Case didn't even have to jump or even get on his tiptoes for that one. Just snatched it out of the air. And a great drive there from Holt House to slice through the defense. Perel Koo traveling. 2.09 to go into third quarter. Hobson and Conley checking in for the Bombers. And here's your 6'8 point guard again. Yeah. He'll give it back to Drew Watson this time, I think. Drew and him have a little conversation. Malachi Conley, left wing. 155 remaining in the third quarter. It's 42-20. Dallas Schutman, hey. Hey, Dallas, did you ever ask your better half about uh, – or did you ever go back and watch what I was talking about there during uh, a volleyball game earlier this year? Maybe it was basketball I told you about. I was wondering if you ever went back and watched that. If you have it, you need to do that. Malachi Conley misses the three, and then Huffman and Hobson get tangled up, and I believe it's going to be Hobson picking up his second foul by fouling Huffman. Yeah, just kind of extended that right arm. Uh, Hobson did right into Huffman, and that's going to be a pretty common foul. Brock Beekman, Gavin Pimble, Connor Upton checking in for BPC. And Nate Kramer, BPC trying to play with six there. It's a good gig if you can get away with it, but they didn't get away with it. Connor Upton with the basketball as we approach the one-minute mark of the third quarter. Malachi Conley with a steal from Beekman. Spin move. Not a good shot. Forced that one up. Not sure what he was spinning out of there. If he kept driving, kept the ball in his left hand, he might have had a layup. Under a minute to go now in the third quarter. Beekman goes over to Gavin Pimble. 46 seconds left. Now to Kleindance. Kleindance goes around Doyle. Missed the shot. Had his hand on the rebound. It's on the floor. Jump ball. Possession's going to go to McComb. That was a wise career decision by Kleindance not to uh, jump right into Doyle and try to go around him with a little up and under there. That was a nice move. Just couldn't finish. 36 seconds left in the third quarter. And looks like Bombers are going to hold it out for the last possession of the quarter here. 15 seconds left. Now down to 10. Watson with it. Ian Case into the first quarter with a three. Three seconds into Doyle. Turnaround jumper. Left it short again. Kleindentz with the rebound. The end of three quarters of play. The Bombers lead 42 to 20. We'll keep it here. This game being brought to you by Rosie's Pizza. Rosie's Pizza offers something for everyone with pasta, sandwiches, and, of course, pizza. Dine in or carry out at 458 East Main Street in Bushnell. They also deliver to Good Hope, Adair, and all points in between. For four delivery, call 309-772-2101 and try the bazooki. You ever heard of a bazooki? I have not heard of a bazooki. A bazooki is essentially a cookie pizza. They have a sugar cookie, chocolate chip cookie, Ice cream with chocolate over the top. Oh, my goodness. That sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds good for the taste. Probably wouldn't be too good for the figure, but I might have to pick up one of those on my way out of here. Yeah, well, my figure was gone a long time ago, so I, I quit worrying about that years and years ago. Came also being brought to you by Pond Plus. Pond Plus is proud to have served Macomb in the surrounding area for over 20 years, providing cash for most items of value. Pond Plus is the area's largest seller of used items, including firearms. They also provide on-site jewelry repair and are open 9 to 5 Monday through Saturday. They have a great selection of jewelry, electronics, tools, and video games. Located at 324 West Jackson Street in Macomb between Erico and Taco Bell. And Farmers and Merchant State Bank for over 100 years. Farmers and Merchant State Bank. 
Upton's three is off, no good. Farmers Merchant State Bank has been serving the local community's needs for personal and business banking as well as home and agricultural lending. They also have a great trust department. Stop by and see the main branch at 484 East Main Street in Bushnell or the Cole, or Cole Street for the drive-up facility. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Langdon Lambert is in the game for Macomb. He had the ball go off his hands right there. That was Gavin Pimble with the three. It's off no good. Malachi Conley with a rebound. It goes back the other way. We are in the fourth quarter. Lambert with it. Bishop and Conley passing the ball back and forth to each other. Now Holdhouse with it. Langdon Lambert down to Hobson. Hobson lays a shoulder into Huffman. No foul called either way, and it's out of bounds. Possession will stay with the Bombers. Holdhouse will have it to inbound underneath his own basket to the left from behind, the right side if you're looking at it from half court. Holdhouse on the inbound. Three left side, left that short. They have left a lot of shots short tonight, it seems like. Not sure what it is. Maybe they were lifting uh, earlier. Yeah, a little tired in the arms, huh? Some soreness or something like that, leaving all those shots just a couple inches short of the rim. Gavin Pimble with it. He's going to be fouled by Malachi Conley. First foul of the quarter. Dallas, I'll have to go back and find it. I can't remember which one it was either. Nate Kramer and Osmond Perelku checking back in for the Spartans. In for the Bombers, number 30 is Tomasu Demarkey. Kleindance loses it, gathers it back up. Perelku. Beekman now is going to drive. A pair of threes doing battle, and Connor Bishop's going to pick up the foul. Team second. Bishop's second. Three fouling three, and 24 has fouled 24 tonight. Just a coincidence? I think not. <laughs> Probably is, actually. It just sounded like the right thing to say. Exactly. I had to finish the quote. Yep. Beekman. Right side, Gavin Pimble. No two to guard him, but we'll deal with it anyway. Down to Kramer. Cross to Kleindance. A little hard. That was a short pass thrown pretty hard, and Kleindance could not reel it in. 5.45 left in the basketball game. Not a whole lot of scoring here in the second half. Kind of started off quick at the start of the third quarter, and then it kind of cooled off. Hobson left that one short as well. I believe both teams are still yet to score in this fourth quarter. Yep, it's uh, we're approaching the three-minute mark into the quarter, and neither team has scored yet here in quarter number four, as Joey said. They might get a chance here, two-on-one break. We'll turn around, off no good. Hobson saved it inbounds, but didn't do what he wanted it to. Malachi Conley gets the benefit of the bucket. And... Hobson literally thought that he lost that ball out of bounds. It's kind of back-to-back -back place there for Hobson on that uh, um, rebound he had. It kind of just uh, tipped off his arm unintentionally. He's got a lucky man tonight. He's 18. He'd go buy a lottery ticket. Jump ball to McComb. Tanner Pierce and Ethan McKim checking in for the Spartans. Number 42. Zariah Penn checks in for the Bombers. And number 21, Cooper Hobson. Oh, excuse me. That's not number 21. It's 25. That's Lambert, I believe. Yep, he was it is Lambert. In. Yep, I, thought, I saw it, and I thought it was a one instead of the five. Cooper Hobson's actually 40 in varsity. I DeMarchi gets the triple, a sports corner three for Tommaso DeMarchi. He's got a sports corner three. Tommaso 
DeMarchi gets the foul, his first. Team's third. Dallas, we are very fair weathered. It's, it is a thing. We did a game or two. We did a lot of games the first year, and we lost some equipment because of it, and uh, it's hard because of the time of the day of the games. Uh, so we have to be a little more – we can't do as many. Uh, plus, when it's really windy, it sounds really bad because we can't get out of the wind at most places. Uh, and then if it's raining or uh, the wind is – chance of rain, it's hard for us to – to, there's a shot put up by Tanner Pierce. Goes off the hands of Langdon, Langdon Albert, Lambert. Langdon Lambert. I'll get it out in a second. Or number 24, Jake Hobson. Not sure which one it actually touched, but it went out of bounds off them. So, yes, we will be doing some baseball and softball. But, no, we do not do all of them. Osmond Perelku gets the bucket for BPC. That's his first two of the night. We are much more fair weather. I know the college baseball and softball season is starting up. Western plays their first softball game February 9th and baseball um, the week after. So I know it's 2024 seems like it just started, but we're nearing closer every day to those spring games. Yep, and high school will start the end of February, so it's not very far behind, and we'll be here before we know it. Last year was just – there's Beekman shot off. No good. Hobson with a rebound. Last year was just a horrible spring for sports. It was super windy all year, and there was rain, it seemed like, all the time. Hobson can't get it to finish. I think Ethan McKim is going to pick up the foul. We'll wait and see. Yep, it is first. Team's first. Plus, it's a lot harder to do baseball and softball because just most of our fields that we have to shoot from aren't really made for shooting. Sports, you know, baseball and softball fields aren't. Hard to get a camera up where you can get that full field view. Yeah. And for BPCs, Reese Reimolds, also number 54, Carter Chambers, and number 15, Xander Jones. He hops and misses the free throw. Jump ball, BPC. Xander Jones will walk it up. Three minutes remaining. Jones gives it over to Pierce. 2.42 left. In a game for the Bombers, number 23 is Martin Polk, Jr., and also in is number 13, Isaac House. Traveling call, turnover to BPC. Two let Let's start the clock here, kids. There we go. Oh, this is some valuable time for these guys here. As you know, I never know when an injury or something could happen, so... Getting these guys some experience is always valuable. DeMarchi, a nice pass out to Langdon Lambert. And Langdon Lambert gets his first two points. And speaking of Langdon Lambert, I know his little brother Logan is here in the house supporting his brother. And uh, wanted to give him a little special shout out here on TSSR Game Time Live. Look at you throwing some names out. I, I got a decent memory. 151 left, and Xander Jones nearly has it stolen away by DeMarchi. There's Reimolds with it. Reese Reimolds gives it off to Tanner Pierce, who goes down to Ethan McKim. McKim gets struggled a little bit. He's in the lane. Pierce now is going to drive. Dumps it down to Carter Chambers. Chambers shot off no good. McKim is going to pick up another foul. It's his second. 126 remaining here in the fourth quarter. It's been a pretty quiet second half. Coach Anderson, though, Joey, still over there. You said this is valuable time for these kids that don't play much, but Coach Anderson is still over there coaching. 
There's exactly. He wants to make sure they're doing everything right and uh, executing all of the plays and the defensive sets they run in practice and um, wants to make sure that they're that this is an actual experience they can benefit from. Marchi, a reverse layup. Count oh, it. Wow. DeMarchi has five. Highlight there, just a little kiss off the high glass. Reimels has a shot blocked, and then that one might have been blocked as well. Polk Jr. goes up to get the rebound. House has it. He has it stolen away. Xander Jones comes down with it. That's a lob pass to Pierce. 25 seconds. He goes over to, is that Jones or Reimels down there? It's Reimels. Carter Chambers on the floor. Jump ball, possession to McComb. Dallas, if uh, we do some more softball and stuff, are you going to help us call some games? Are you going to get on here and be one of our broadcasters for baseball and softball if we do some games, some more games? Polk Jr. nearly loses out of bounds. There's Penn, Lambert, House. DeMarch is going to try another one. He hits it. A sports corner three for DeMarchi. He has eight, and that's how it ends. 54-22, the final. We'll take a break, and we'll come back with some stats and hopefully some interviews here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH in just a couple minutes. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. It was the community that really drew me back to Macomb. I'm from a small community, uh, and I'm from a farm family, and ultimately I always wanted to practice in a place like that, and I felt that I had uh, the ability to connect to people who with a similar background from me, and the fact that the staff members at the hospital and the support, every, all the support staff at the hospital was also focused with the goal of patient care, it felt like it just all came hammered at home for me. Find the right cycle combinations. Simply choose what and how you want to wash and dry to help keep clothes looking their best. Intuitive Controls, brought to you by Whirlpool. There's been a lot of rewarding parts working at McDonough District Hospital. I've had patients come to me that maybe have not had care in the community, care available, so with the addition of nurse practitioners lately we've been able to add more care and that's very rewarding to me. My hope is that when the patients leave at the end of an appointment they leave and they definitely feel like they've been listened to and they feel like their needs have been met, their cares have been met, and that they're going to get the proper treatment that they deserve from me as a provider. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. Welcome back to Bushnell Prairie City High School. You've been watching Devin Raleigh's shelter insurance coverage of, of Bushnell Prairie City Spartan Sports and Arnold Brothers heating and cooling coverage of Macomb High Sports on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. Well, thank you for joining us. Let's hopefully get a couple of coaches to come over and talk to us, although not a whole lot to talk about uh, in a game that ended up 54-22. to Dallas Shootman, I uh, I may uh, hold you to it. If I see you at a game, I'm just going to snag you and make you come uh, make you come talk with me. There's nothing wrong with that. You just can't uh, you can't cheer a whole lot for Jordan. That's just how it works. You got to be somewhat unbiased, somewhat. 
We'll look at some stats here from uh, the contests. 11 points for Dion Doyle. He was one of two from the free throw line. Ian Case had 10 points. He was two of two from the free throw line. Connor Bishop had three points. He was one of one from the free throw lines. Bomber shot four of five from the charity stripe. Drew Watson had seven points. Malachi Conley had six points. Ian Case had 10 points. Eight points for Tommaso DeMarchi. He had two threes. Langdon Lambert had two. Jake Hobson had two. And Connor Bishop had three for the Bombers. Four BPC, no players in double figures. Tanner Kleindens was a leading scorer with eight points. Three for Gavin Pimble. Two for Lane Huffman. Two for Osmond Perelku. Three points for Dalton Huffman as he was one of two from the free throw line. Connor Upton had three points. And unofficially, three of four from the charity stripe were the Spartans. And that is all the scoring that the, bomb, that the Spartans had in this 54-22 loss to Macomb High. I think people expected this to be a bomber victory. I think a lot of people expected it to be a little bit closer than that. BPC just could not get anything going offensively against what has been all season long a very stingy Macomb defense, and that's what Macomb has really lived on most of the season, and it worked well for them again tonight as they held BPC to just 22 points. BPC was missing Caden Palm, one of their leading scorers and one of their normal starters who was out with an ankle injury tonight, so... There was uh, some problems for BPC there, and he would have made somewhat of a difference, I would imagine, but just uh, was not able to go with the ankle injury. And we may not get either coach tonight. We'll just wait for a few seconds. Again, there's not a whole lot to talk about in a 54-22 contest, and I don't imagine that either coach really wants to say a whole lot Talk about the good things you did, but it's hard to talk about the good things you did when you uh, beat somebody or get beat by 30 points. So Coach Anderson may be walking this way. He'll probably talk to Justice, see if we can get him to come up here and talk to us in a second. As he wanders across the floor. We'll take another break. We'll see if we can get uh, – Coach Snyder out here, too. I haven't got to talk to Coach Snyder, I don't think, after a single basketball game. Hey, Coach, you want to come talk to us real quick? We'll get Coach Anderson on here real quick since he's standing up there. Dwayne, haven't seen you. I know. You've been lucky. What's happening, hey, man? Hey, not a lot. Not a lot. Uh, just a, a lot of snow and ice. My all kinds goodness. Of horrible crap like that. I am think I'm over the quota. I think I am, too. I agree. Well, uh, not a whole lot to talk about. Your guys' defense, you've kind of used it to be dominant all season long, and it was really good tonight. I think there's things you still have to keep, you know, uh, practicing daily maintenance wise you know bpc does some stuff that offensively that you don't see other teams do like they'll run that cross screen action right into ball screen action so we worked on that yesterday in practice and had a hard time getting the fill and the sink and all this you know lingo but it's really good for teams to see other teams that run different things throughout the course of the season because you never know what you're going to run into in a regional semifinal game that somebody's waited, hasn't played it, so no one could scout it, and then that mo and then that point they they you know they throw it on you and man you better have some sort of background. So it's great to see those different types of things. I thought our guys did a pretty decent job. The only thing defensively I was not real happy with is we didn't finish possessions like we should. We gave them way too many second chances. Yeah, Tanner Kleindens, especially early in the game, got a bunch of good looks. Yeah. He didn't finish, but he got a bunch of second and third opportunities. Right, and, he, and they're long, and they can jump, and we weren't blocking out the way we should, and we gave them those you know, second chance opportunities. That's something, if you're going to play that really good defense, you're going to work that hard, man. Don't blow it by 
not finishing the possession. And so that's something we're definitely going to have to uh, emphasize moving forward. DeMarchi off the bench, eight points. Yeah, you know, he's foreign exchange um, from Italy. I told him the other day in practice, I said, Tommy, you're the smartest dude from Italy I know. A couple, seconds, he's the only couple seconds later, he know. says, am I the only dude from Italy you know? I said, well, you caught on to that pretty fast. <laughs> he's a, he is a really solid practice player. He's been a, he has been a godsend to us, to tell you the truth, Dwayne, because in practices, man, he, he plays the scout team, whatever the other team's going to do. He's really smart, and so I can show him, and then he can go out there and do it right on cue. And, uh, and he holds his own. He holds his own. He's got some skill. He's a guy that you would uh, – Love to have had as a freshman, right, and then right. build all the way through your program. But it's been really cool to have Tommy this year. Uh, one of the things I pointed out is we got down to two minutes to go. You had all the subs and stuff like that in. And you were still down there coaching the subs just like you were coaching the starters. And I think people – that's kind of lost sometimes. But that's – as Joey pointed out, those kids may have to play at some point, and you need them to do the things right, right? Now, Dwayne, if you remember a couple of years ago, <laughs> going to a regional game at Auburn or get at Porta against Auburn, you remember earlier in the season we had Big Mike, we had Hayden Case, we had Dion, we had Ian Case rotating those four guys in at the post. Well, by the time we got to that regional game, the only post we had left was Hayden. The rest of them weren't with us no more. Yeah. So you better have guys that are, are at least know what they're supposed to do, right? Right. But the other end of that is in practices, those kids work hard, you know. Mm -hmm. They deserve to be coached while they're in the games. They deserve to be treated as, as it's just as important as when the first five or whatever are out there. And they play like that too. Sure. When you get when you get three or four or five minutes of playing time for those guys, people are like, oh, it's a, you, you know, they're already up by 30. Why are you scoring? I was, uh, I was like the seventh guy off the bench in a team that played six and seven sure, pairs, right, right? So right. I didn't play a ton. But when I got in, I wanted to score. Oh, and those kids deserve that opportunity, right? Right, right. And it's, it's full speed. But you expect them to do things the, the way right we're way. taught, right? right? Absolutely. I was glad to get everybody in. And um, it's, really, it's a really good deal when you can do that. You can't do that every game, obviously. So. so in all this fiasco of weather, you were able to get some games in. You played a little bit anyway. We played last weekend. We were able to play home against Line of West on Friday and then had a game against Monmouth Roseville on Saturday. And so we were able to, to, to get back in the flow a little bit. You know, I thought early last week, man, we were all thumbs. No one could catch. Everybody was out of breath. It takes – it's like starting over. But, you know, I, I actually – told the guys i said this is like starting over but it's worse because if you think about go back to day one november 7th we had 12 practices before right. we went to the bpc tournament these two weeks we may get six practices in before we're going to go try to play somebody right. so it's, it's actually it's tough and i was i've been saying to everybody we're just fortunate that 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 this situation didn't happen or hopefully it doesn't happen in a couple of weeks when we're all trying to prepare to play in a regional Could you imagine going into a regional not have played for two weeks and only practice twice yeah crazy and then you're just rolling the ball out at that point now on the other hand you have to make up or going to try to make up some of those games you've lost does that hurt you or help you going into the postseason See, I'm, i i think that some of those are done they're not there's not a capability you know we lost games like at north mac and gerard right. and at the moline shootout those games aren't coming back right right um so yeah, you guys didn't lose conference games for the most part did you well we only get to play four conference games yeah so um, but I, I had heur I've heard other people say, well, now we got a stretch of we got seven games in nine days, and, I, and I'm not sure that's a good way to do it either. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying because A Town girls were supposed to have four games in five days this See, week. I'm, now they lost two because of weather last yeah. night tonight, which probably is a benefit. But I mean, that's what there's two sides to that wrong, coin. Absolutely, you he, know, you, you lose practices, and then then you're coming in just like you do at the start of the tournament. Right. That first tournament, you play four, five days in a row, right. no practices. We well, you know what happens with five days games in a row. You develop bad habits because you can't go back and you can't look at things and you can't teach and you know it's hard to do those types of things during the game. So yeah, that's that's a rough stretch. I know, and I know guys are like, well, we missed out on some games. Yes, you did, and. None of us had any control over that. Right. And you're not going to have any control no. of just part of the basketball season. Right. Absolutely. Well, Coach, I'll let you get out of here. Thank Thanks, you much, man. sir. Yeah, I appreciate absolutely. it. It's Every good time. seeing you. Yep, Congratulations see you. on the win. Thank you. Coach Anderson talking to us for a few minutes. Coach Snyder, you want to talk for a second since you're walking by?
right place, wrong time, or wrong time, right place. I don't know, something like that. Coach Schneider under the headset. And uh, McComb's long, fast, and not having Caden probably didn't help you guys a whole lot tonight, did it? No, and, and uh, you know, and he would have helped. Uh, but, again, they're a really disciplined team. They played hard, and they play hard, and, um, you know, move the ball well and uh, give up some open shots early that they make and kind of changes how you expect the game to go. Their defense is pretty good. Yeah. Is that uh – is that where's that rank as far as the defense you guys have seen this year? I mean, you guys have had some struggles scoring offensively, but generally twenty two points is not hard for you to get to, but it was it seemed hard tonight. Yeah. Um I mean again, they play pressure man defense and um, you know, ball handlers have problems with that in your face and and kind of speed them speed us up, then we get kinda of out of control and um it's it's difficult for us to get into our offense um but their i mean their defense is good and you know probably one of the best ones that we've seen all year and we'll see all, all year um but again we'll, we have to execute and uh handle the pressure uh, tanner glendance did a few good things but he's one of those kids that seemed like tonight was he got in some good spots but he was rushing stuff it seemed like to me. I mean, I I, I don't get, I haven't got to see you guys a lot this year, but it seems like to me that he was in good spots several times, but just was concerned about the size and the height around him that he rushed some stuff. Yeah, and uh, again, the, they're physical, so you're trying to execute something on offense, and you uh, might not be used to a guy right there to that's going to hold his ground and stand his ground and uh, not allow you to do what you want to do. Uh, and so that's difficult for him, but uh, I, I'm not disappointed in how I played, or how, how I played, how we played, just because in two weeks we've had a game and two practices, and then this game here. So you can't really get in the flow of basketball like it was. Um, how, how again, hard is this time of the year? I mean, basketball, obviously you're, you're coaching basketball, so it's kind of the risk you take, right? But how hard is this time of the year and coaching and, and those kinds of stretches? Very hard. That's one thing I told them in the, in the locker room. I said, guys, this is what, this is what sinks as, as far as basketball goes because uh, you're expected to play a game and you're expected to practice and practice and practice, but when you can't practice – because Mother Nature doesn't allow it, and it's like, well, they'll allow you to play a game, so now it's just play a game. Um, you, it's it's tough. You know, you're expected to go get into the gym somewhere, um, but again, if you can't get out of your house because the roads are slick or there's too much snow, then you know you're stuck. So it's tough. We've all been through there, through it. Um, You've been there, you're going to be there again probably. Uh, I mean, maybe not this year, but next year, the year after or whatever, right? Right. right. I mean, I know there was a time out in North Carolina that I played, and when I coached out there, we had a two-week span where we had a day and a half of school. And just like here, when, when school's canceled, you can't practice. And we went two weeks without playing a game and had to start our state tournament. How'd that work out for you? Um, we got beat, but we played a really good team. So yeah, that's now I asked Coach Anderson this. They, they didn't lose like conference games or games that they c can probably even make up. But when you lose games, you've rescheduled one for Saturday and yeah. you reschedule some games and you want to play you want to play games. But at the same time, we're getting towards the end of the season and the days to enter or to reschedule games are fewer. Plus, every time you reschedule a game at this point, you're losing a day of practice, too. Right. Right. And uh and, and uh, you know, we put in a new offense the last few days of practice. And, uh, you know, you, you go practice Wednesday, Thursday, and expect practice Friday or to play Friday so you can see how that offense works. Well, then you don't practice Friday. Then you don't practice Monday. So now the kids have, to have four days of not practicing that offense. Um, kind of like, all right, well. <laughs> Do we go back to well, what we did, or do we go ahead and try it? Yeah, and we tried it tonight. We got a couple open looks uh, with it, but, uh, again, when it's not just beat into their head, beat into their head for, like, two or three or four days in a row, it's it's kind of difficult. But, again, I'm 
not to say that I would expect how we play tonight because I think um, we didn't execute on some things and we passed up some some shots or some chances that we could have shot the ball. But, you know, it, it, it happens. Macomb got a couple games in over last weekend, and, and yeah. I think it kind of looked like they were able to play some, didn't it? Yep, and and you can you can see that. And uh, I, even if they didn't play, I know that they had a couple open gyms or some practices, um, which is the same thing when we faced Farmington. We played on a Friday and then nothing until that next Thursday. So you played on Friday and then nothing until Thursday, and then you're turn, expected to turn around and play again. Um but again, it's a, you can't fight Mother Nature. I don't have any issues with what can't build our decisions a, can't are. build a dome over McDonough County, can you? No, you cannot. And we have so many kids that live on side roads that might not get, uh, you know, as as touched and as maintained as the highway that I live on. So right, yeah, I live in one of those <laughs> back roads myself. I understand. It's, yeah, it's been. It's not been fun getting out of my house. I'm I'm sure it has not. Even uh, four wheel drive in my truck some days is not was not the greatest. So yeah. and I had four wheel drive and it's not the greatest either. So, <laughs> but anyway, well, coach, uh, I'm glad I got to talk to you. I haven't got to see you much this I year. I know you've been hiding. You've been ducking us. Yeah, I've been hiding at Western a lot this uh, fall. I know. I see you guys do a great job over there. Kind of lost uh, the heartbreaker on Saturday. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't at that one. I was doing, you know, Shelby Bowman from West Central. She's uh, their best player. She scored yeah. 48 on Wednesday and 44 wow. on Saturday. That's impressive. Yeah, she's not bad. That's that's Lincoln that's Trail Conference ball. champions for West Central. So That's a good ball player right there. Yeah, I, I don't know that I scored 48 points my whole basketball career. <laughs> I'd, I only played in junior high. I didn't play in high school. Should have played in high school, but, you know, you just start doing other things. And you yep. just, yep. I mean, I knew it's I was going to be round instead of tall well, and figured. It happens. You know, what the heck. Yep, it happens. Stick to something I could be good at. At any rate, Coach, thanks for talking to us. Yep. Uh, ha- before, uh, there's still some people watching. What about tomorrow night? Uh, tomorrow night we have a fundraiser at Sports Corner uh, in Macomb. Uh, we're getting 20% of our food sales between 4.30 or their, their food sales, I guess, from between 4.30 and 9.30. So if you uh, want to take the family out uh, and help support the PC basketball program, it would be greatly appreciated. We have practice until 5, uh, and then I'm going to head up, head that way to make sure I can kind of be around and, and uh, thank yeah. everybody that's going to be there. Any of the kids coming support. and uh, busting yeah. bustin tables or anything? Uh, or? Nope. I asked uh, – Mr. McKee about it, and uh, he said, nope, we don't need you to do anything. I said, well, we'll be glad to help, and he said, he said, nope. So I said, my kids get enough of it <laughs> <laughs> after games picking up. So, um, but, no, so we'll be there. I'll probably be there about 545 or so, depending on how quick I can get out of here after practice. Um, and, uh, like I said, get there and thank everybody for showing up. All right, well get out of here so you can get there early get some rest tonight and be ready to eat some wings tomorrow night it's one dollar wing night yeah a right? dollar wing night yep that's so that's pretty good wings should there be a the, good turnout at sports corner at 124 yep. so well coach thanks again appreciate it yep a thanks again for tonight, but hopefully we'll get to see you again down uh, later yep. in the year yep friday we're on the road at brimfield and then saturday and on the road at havana it's one of the makeup games so yeah so uh y- you didn't lose did you are you making up any games you lost at home? Uh, besides West Prairie, the fifth. That's our only. That's road the only game. one. You that's our only, only home game, right? Yep. And then Havana's also the only game that we missed there. So, uh, I'll make sure. I, I know you messaged me about this, and you, you posted on Facebook. So, the fifth, you're going to play the junior JV boys at five. Yes. And then you're going to play varsity girls. Correct. And then varsity boys. Correct. Okay. Yep. So, so JV boys will start at five, and then varsity 630-ish. girls six thirty ish, and then we'll start around eight. I think. Okay. Wanted to make sure I was right. Um, yeah, because that was our senior night. So, and with uh, and that's still going to be senior night. It, that is still going to be senior night. So that'd be Monday, February fifth. Okay. So well, we'll be, be here for that. All right. So I appreciate it, Coach. Thank yep. you very much. Yep. Thanks for all that you guys do here at TSSR. No problem. We'll see you tomorrow night. All right. Coach Schneider talking to us.
Joey, you want to say anything before we head out? Joey says he's good. Not a whole lot to talk about. Well, for Joey Yelnick, I'm Dwayne Hewlett. Thanks for joining us here from Bushnell Prairie City High School. Final score, 54-22. Bombers beat the Spartans. You've been watching Spartan Sports, brought to you by Devin Raleigh Shelter Insurance. And Bomber Sports, brought to you by Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling. So for Joey Yelnick, I'm Dwayne Hewlett. Thanks for joining us on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. We've got games every night this week, so hang tight. There's plenty to watch the rest of the basketball season.